Hi, my name is Tony Santo, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to process slide film using the six bath method, just like your local laboratory does. To develop your slide film using the traditional six bath method that your local laboratory uses, you're going to need all these chemicals. First developer replenisher, first developer starter, color reversal bath and replenisher, color developer replenisher part A, color developer replenisher part B, color developer starter, conditioner plus and replenisher, bleach replenisher, bleach starter, universal C41 and Pro 6 fixer and replenisher, and rinse plus and replenisher. To avoid cross-contamination, I've labeled all of my containers with the name of that particular chemistry and how to mix it. I've color coordinated it. I've put numbers on the containers for the sequence that that particular chemical occurs in. I've also matched all of the containers with their respective measuring cups. So again, it's color coordinated, labeled, same thing with the mixing spoons. So I have individual spoons, I have individual measuring cups, individual containers for each of the chemicals so that I minimize any risk of cross-contamination. It really pays to be highly organized when it comes to developing film. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know I'm a big fan of using distilled water to mix my chemistry up. The reason being is because it doesn't have any impurities, so it's not going to interact and have an adverse effect on my chemistry and therefore affect the film developing process. So I'm going to get optimal results that are consistent by utilizing distilled water to mix my chemistry up. The first thing I'm going to do is take my distilled water and place it into each of my containers. Then once the water has an opportunity to settle, I'll use the measurement indicator bars in liters on my containers to verify that I have the appropriate amount of water in each of the containers. Now I have verified through measurement that these containers do in fact measure the amount of liquid in the containers accurately. The measurement indicators on my containers go in increments of two, so two, four, six, eight, and 10. So to get something like 9,600 milliliters, what I do is I bulk fill to the eight liter mark, and then I'll finish off the precise measurements using the measuring cup with the remainder of that 1,600 milliliters. So here I'm measuring to the 1,000 milliliter mark. Dump that into the container. Now I need 600. Once I get my distilled water in each of my containers, I like to let them sit for a little bit just to check for leaks. These particular containers that I've been using over the years are vulnerable to cracking and I have lost chemistry that way. So I've learned that it's better just to let the water sit in each of the containers, check to see if there are any leaks so that I don't lose any chemistry. Because if you lose, let's say just one chemical and you've lost, let's say 2000 milliliters, you're not going to be able to use 2000 milliliters of your other chemicals unless you crack open a new bottle of that particular chemical and that can be very, very wasteful. So you won't be able to develop all the film that you originally intended. So it's best practice to check for leaks before you mix the chemical into the water containers. Don't forget to wear your proper PPE. Your health depends on it. To dilute the first developer replenisher, I add 2,000 milliliters of concentrate, that's one full bottle, to 7,500 milliliters of distilled water and mix the solution 20 times or until uniform. Be careful as to not overmix the solution as that increases oxidation and weakens the chemistry. I finalize the working tank solution by adding 50 milliliters of first developer starter concentrate. To dilute the color reversal bath and replenisher, I add 400 milliliters of concentrate, that's one full bottle, to 9,500 milliliters of distilled water and mix the solution 20 times or until uniform. Be careful as to not overmix the solution as that increases oxidation and weakens the chemistry. 
To prepare a stock solution of the color developer replenisher, I add 2,000 milliliters of concentrate part A, that's one full bottle, to 5,500 milliliters of distilled water and mix the solution 20 times or until uniform. This is sequentially followed by adding 2,000 milliliters of concentrate part B, that's one full bottle, and mix the solution 20 times or until uniform. Be careful as to not overmix the solution as that increases oxidation and weakens the chemistry. An important note to remember is that you'll have an excess of 1,000 milliliters of this stock solution. I recommend saving the excess until you develop all of your film in case you need to prepare additional working tank solution. There have been a few times where I ran my process and misjudged the amount of chemistry I was using. In those instances, having the spare chemistry enabled me to develop the last of my film. To prepare the working tank solution of the color developer replenisher, I add 50 milliliters of color developer starter concentrate to 1,000 milliliters of distilled water in a separate tank. I finalize the preparation by adding 9,000 milliliters of stock solution of color developer replenisher from the previous step and mix the solution 20 times or until uniform. Be careful as to not overmix the solution as that increases oxidation and weakens the chemistry. To dilute the conditioner plus and replenisher, I add 1,000 milliliters of concentrate, that's one full bottle, to 8,750 milliliters of distilled water and mix the solution 20 times or until uniform. To dilute the bleach replenisher, I add 200 milliliters of starter concentrate to 4,800 milliliters of distilled water. I finalize the working tank solution by adding 5,000 milliliters of bleach replenisher and mix the solution 20 times or until uniform. Bleach thrives off of mixing and introducing oxidation into the solution. To dilute the fixer and replenisher, I add 1,000 milliliters of concentrate, that's a half a bottle, to 9,000 milliliters of distilled water and mix the solution 20 times or until uniform. Overmixing does not weaken this chemical. To dilute the rinse plus and replenisher, I add 100 milliliters of concentrate, that's one full bottle, to 9,750 milliliters of distilled water and mix the solution 20 times or until uniform. Overmixing does not weaken this chemical. Once mixed, you will have 10 liter working tank solutions of all seven of the chemicals needed for the E6 process. Once you've mixed up your chemistry, it should look very similar to what I have here. The first developer and the color developer should look like light beers. The first developer looks more like a Coors Light. The color developer looks more like a Budweiser. Initially, when you mix the color developer up, you don't want to be worried if you see a pinkish purplish hue. That's normal. By tomorrow morning, this will be brown and it'll look like a Budweiser. In fact, just in the time that I've waited from mixing the chemistry up until now, it's already changed color a little bit and it's looking more brown. The reversal bath, conditioner plus, fixer, and rinse plus are all clear. The rinse plus in particular has a bit of a foam at the top. So the more you handle it, the more foamy it gets. Now the bleach, is red and as it oxidizes which it actually thrives off of oxidation it will turn a little more brown so it'll be more like a reddish brown eventually the jobo has been an integral part of my workflow in developing color reversal film it does two things one is that it maintains the chemistry at 38 degrees celsius that's important that's a critical temperature Otherwise, you'll get some color shifts if you don't maintain it properly. The other thing that it does, it provides constant agitation of the chemistry over the film inside the drum. So it rotates backwards and then it rotates forwards. The disadvantage of the Jobo is the fact that this stuff is very, very expensive. Be sure to adjust the drum's water bath to the appropriate level based on the drum you use. Please consult your Jobo's operating manual for further detail. Precisely measure the amount of chemistry you'll need based on the drum you're using and pour into the Jobo bottles. Place the Jobo bottles into the water bath and allow ample time for the chemistry to reach 38 degrees Celsius. Be sure to change the lever on the Jobo lift to the corresponding tank size you'll be using. Down is for smaller tanks, up is for expert drums. After loading film into the tank, allow the drum to warm up on the processor for five minutes. These are the processing times I adhere to. Pre-warm the drum with no liquid for five minutes. First developer, seven and a half minutes. For the water washes, I lay out four cups and wash the film for 30 seconds per cup of water. Reversal bath, two minutes. Color developer, four minutes. Conditioner plus, two minutes. Bleach, six minutes. Fixer, four minutes. For the water washes, I lay out 10 cups and wash the film for 30 seconds per cup of water. Final rinse, at least one minute, but no longer than four minutes. For the final rinse, I complete this either in a tray for sheet film or my measuring cup for roll film for one minute. An important tip regarding development times, 
is that all of the steps except for the first developer and color developer won't be adversely affected if you go over in time because the action of the chemical goes to completion. That is, the effect of that chemical will no longer result in further reaction with the film once the chemical reaction is complete. So, if you go over in time by a few minutes, your film will be perfectly fine. Just remember, this tip does not apply to the first and color developers. As you can see, the steps that have the narrowest range of allowable temperature fluctuation are the first developer and color developer. These are critical steps for proper latent image development and should be tightly controlled. The remainder of the steps have generous latitudes, making it easier for developing without the Jobo processor. Jobo produced many different developing tanks over the years. These are the ones that I own and the corresponding amount of chemistry that I use per run of development. You'll also see the total amount of film you can process if you only used one type of drum per the entire 10 liters of chemistry. Once your drum has been heated for 5 minutes, the development process is simple. It's just a matter of pouring your chemicals into the Jobo, processing each step for the amount of time shown earlier, and dumping out your used chemistry for disposal according to your local regulations. It's important to note that I use my chemistry for one-shot processing. That is, I only use the chemistry once and then I discard it. Chemistry can be reused, however, the chemicals weaken with each subsequent use and therefore reduces the developing efficacy. The amount of weakening depends upon the film surface area processed through the chemistry. To ensure optimal effect of the chemical, you will need to replenish the solution with fresh chemistry. For more specific information related to this topic, please consult the Fujifilm technical bulletins for each of the chemicals. So for the last water wash, I'm going to keep that water inside the tank because that's going to help remove the lid. With the fluid inside and the combination of air, it kind of acts like a hydraulic lift. So I'm going to turn off the motor, let the water drain from the water jackets, and then we can go ahead and open up the tank using this pump and we can see what we have. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna take my film now and place it into the Rinse Plus. The fun part is opening up the drums to see the results. As I mentioned earlier, depending upon the size of the negative, I use a tray or measuring cup to place the film in the final rinse. If you do this in your drums, it can lead to an accumulation of final rinse gunk, which will make it difficult to load your film and also results in cross-contamination of your chemistry. This accumulation of final rinse gunk is not easily removed from your film reels. The last step is to hang your film to dry for about 30 minutes, depending upon your environmental conditions. While the film is drying, I like to touch the very edge of my sheet film with a lint-free towel to remove the water droplet that accumulates. It's important to note that freshly developed slide film will appear milky with a blue tint. However, as the emulsion dries, this will disappear. The 10 liters of chemistry I use with this setup enable me to process 62 sheets of 8x10, 14 rolls of 120, and one roll of 135 film during my most recent film developing marathon. If you'd like to support me and my channel, please consider liking this video by giving it the old thumbs up, subscribing to the channel if you're a newcomer, leaving a comment below, maybe you have a developing tip that you'd love to share with all of us. And you know, if everybody donates just one dollar to the channel that views the, this video, then that goes a long way in helping supporting me in my channel endeavors. And don't forget, you could always share the video with friends as well. As always, thanks for watching.